Good evening. Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in the Loop. My name is Pastor Ben Adams, and we are so grateful to have you with us on this sunniest of Saturdays, a perfect weekend for St. Patrick's Day weekend. And I'm not sure why we have to do daylight savings time, but if it means that we're going to get an extra hour of this kind of sunshine at night, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with setting the clocks forward an hour. So that's your one reminder tonight that you will have to set your clocks forward tonight. Uh, we'll do another one during the announcements a little bit later as well. But this is also the uh, week that we commemorate the, the first we week since last year that we went virtual with our worship. Um, it was this weekend, a year ago today, that we started our virtual online worship experience for this past year, which has been quite the year. And so we know we carry a lot of emotion here tonight, a lot of lament uh, for the year that we've endured. Um, and so we just name that before we begin our worship here today. But we also want to let you know that you are welcome here in this worshipful virtual space, that you are welcome without exception. We are first welcomed by Christ, and therefore we welcome one another. We are welcome no matter who we are or where we're from, no matter the color of our skin or who we love or marry, no matter our gender identity, our age, our ability, our documentation status, our voting record, even our spiritual journey, where, wherever we're at on that, how we feel about organized church or religion, or especially right now, church online. We pray that this is a space where you experience a sense of belonging in this community and a sense of God's presence and mystery in your life. And today is going to be a special service of sorts. Um, our sermon comes to us uh, from Reverend Kelly Falstich from Resurrection Lutheran in Lakeview, and it's part of the Lakeview Lutheran Parish. Uh, many of you here in the loop may not have heard that um, as one church in two sites, our Lakeview site is part of a group of four Lutheran parishes in the neighborhood of Lakeview. And we are calling ourselves the Lakeview Lutheran Parish and doing a lot together. And so as part of this, uh, all of our pastors from the four uh, congregations have been preaching in each other's churches. And so tonight is a special day where we get to hear from Reverend Kelly Falstich, who has recorded a sermon for us here tonight. And uh, I'm sure we're all going to enjoy it. And uh, it'll be great to enjoy uh, a little bit of the taste of, of the Lakeview Lutheran Parish, which you know, we have our own relationship here with Grace Place, but it's great to be one church in two sites and be able to experience the gifts of all of the churches in Lakeview as well. So with all of that said, I invite you to take a deep breath, to center your hearts and minds as we prepare our hearts for worship, and we begin tonight with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of the stars of night, companion at the evening table, breath over the deep waters. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word, we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In silence, let us confess the, before God the harm we have inflicted in thought, word, and deed. In silence, let us confess before God the good we have left undone. Thank you. 
In silence, let us confess before God the evil done in our name and with our silent approval. who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your life, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites sent out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze 
and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord. And you delivered them from their distress. You deliver your people from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the age to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
gospel according to John. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in high school, my choir director was a very reverent Roman Catholic man who come the season of Lent, would have us substitute a certain four-syllable word beginning with the letter A with four other one-syllable words so that we could practice any sacred music we were learning without using that A word and still be able to perform it come Eastertide. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, it is Lent now. Jesus lifted me. This hymn, 860 in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnals, comes to us out of the African-American call and response tradition that according to the ELW hymnal companion to Suzanne Flandreau of the Center for Black Music and Music Research in Chicago is part of a, a collection of hymns that were passed down orally and not recorded or published until fairly recently. This hymn first showing up in 1971 in an Episcopal hymnal supplement. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. The next verse is, Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Each verse of this song is sung in thanksgiving to God for all that God has done and continues to do and to be and to move. In our reading from Numbers this morning, Moses has led the people out of Egypt. After years of living as enslaved peoples and then the plagues and the Passover, the journey through the waters and the diet of manna and quail, the commandments declared, after all of this, Moses and Aaron and Miriam and the people in the wilderness are for the most part not glad. We might understand the Israelites' attitude here, our, our compassion, our sympathy might be with them. We know it had been a long and hard road from Egypt. We know that they had left behind the familiar in the hopes of something better. But the narrator of this numbers text makes it pretty clear that this is not just an instance of, of righteous lament or faithful crying out. They became impatient, verse 4 reads. And so the Israelites start whining, complaining, for there is no food and water and we detest this miserable food. It's similar to saying we have nothing to eat while looking into that full fridge or the we have nothing to do when there's game consoles and sports equipment and books sitting idly by. 
the Israelites' complaint here isn't meant with parental challenge or just exasperation, though the complaining here is met with God's response of sending poisonous snakes, deadly snakes. This is more than God placing a a red no uh, circle with a slash through the word whining or God changing the Wi-Fi password so that the children of Israel will find another activity. God sends down snakes to kill the whiners. I can't say I remember any Sunday school crafts for this passage growing up, can you? But when the people make corporate confession, we have sinned and Moses prays on their behalf, the God who we sometimes sing about changing not, changes the course and instructs Moses in the ways of fashioning a bronze serpent on a stick. And the people look to that which was lifted up and provided by God, and they live. In Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, the Pharisees who had come with questions, the Pharisee who had come with questions at night Jesus draws a connection between this bronze serpent in the wilderness with himself. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life, Jesus tells Nicodemus. We might identify how the Son of Man is lifted up in John's passion narrative in two or three instances. On the cross, Jesus is lifted up. From the grave, Jesus is lifted up. And into heaven, to rule and to judge and to love and to live forever, Jesus is lifted up. For God loved the world that God gave Jesus so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Out of love, God gives Jesus. Out of of love, God lifts God's self up. Out of a broken and violent world, out of death and finality, out of the now into the forever or what may be. God's strength, God's presence, God's love is so vast that extends beyond all human barriers and all human understandings. It's like those videos. I remember one from physics in high school that show a person standing on earth or sitting on earth. And then the shot pans out to the country, maybe. And then the the whole planet and the solar system and, and beyond and beyond and beyond. God is like that. God of creation, of the cosmos, of the world. It's a reminder that it's not just all about us. And and still that that vision, that video, that, that capacity, I think works in reverse too. God's strength and presence with and love for all creation, for the cosmos, for the world, for this community for our congregations also includes us, you. You, child of God, God's strength and presence with and God's love is for you too, right now, wherever you are or however you are. Whining about the wilderness or or giving thanks for what's in your world today, asking questions late at night, or or confident on this Sunday morning, really living into Lent or feeling a little Easter joy creeping in, hopeful or fearful or angry or glad, you are part of this world that we hear about in the gospel. You are, are part of this world that God so loved and that God so loves. Child of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, lifted up as beloved this day and always. 
you are loved. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Mm -hmm. Jesus lifted me. Amen. Amen. Now with the whole church, let us confess 
our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, let us pray to our loving God for all the needs of the world. O oh God, empower all the baptized for ministries of service throughout this pandemic. Bless Courtney, Grady, and all those preparing for baptism, and Allison, Kathleen, and Tony preparing for affirmation of baptism at Easter. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Continue your creation of this good earth, nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures, and bless the fields being prepared for the growing season. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. In Brazil and wherever COVID-19 rages, send healing. In Myanmar and wherever tyranny rules, restore human rights. In Nigeria and wherever there is domestic terrorism, send concord. In Ethiopia and wherever there is bloodshed, bring peace. In Yemen and wherever people starve, give food and water. In the United States and wherever there is discrimination, inspire all residents to honor one another and to strive for justice. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Give rest and welcome to migrants. Protect all who are incarcerated or who live in our streets. Hear our prayers for those who suffer from disaster, hunger, or disease, especially those we name in the chat or by our meeting. Alex, Ruben. For all those who are Kevin Strickland. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Bless the HT Loop and HT Lakeview worshiping communities, including those who have joined us online during the past year. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. We praise you for all the saints who have lived and died in Christ, especially Blessed Mary, Patrick, and Joseph, and we remember before you all who have died from COVID-19. At the end, bring us with them into life in your presence. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. To you, O oh God, our only God, we entrust all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. Well, I'd like to say a word of welcome once again to everyone here tonight at HT Loop. We are so grateful to have you with us here in worship. And we're grateful for everyone who gives online or by writing checks and sending them to the church through the mail. Um, we are so grateful for the continued generosity. If you are not already set up with giving either online or in the mail, you can always give uh, through Venmo, actually. So uh, I think Bo will drop that, or it's already been dropped in the chat, but you can always give there. It's kind of like passing the Venmo plate around during worship right now, which is interesting to say the least. Um, I also saw a few names that I didn't recognize. So if you are a newcomer with us and you want to be known or you'd like to know more about our congregation, um, I'm going to ask Bo to drop that link as well into the chat. Uh, we're actually going to be having a newcomer orientation on Monday, and it's not too late to still join in if you'd like to be a part of that and hear a little bit more about Holy Trinity and get involved more. Um, that'll be an opportunity for you to, to learn more about our congregation and for us to learn a little bit more about you. As I said earlier, when we were welcoming you to worship tonight, 
daylight savings time is upon us tomorrow. So don't forget to set your clocks for it. I mean, most of us have phones these days, so it just does it automatically. But I know this is probably too many reminders. I've been on social media today and I've seen thousands of reminders, it seems like already uh, for daylight savings time, but you can never be too safe. Uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, tomorrow morning is the rite of enrollment for our Life Together uh, Catechumenate Journeyers. Uh, so our Catechumenate process is our discipleship formation process here at, at Holy Trinity. And uh, folks who are going through that process, we name them in our prayers. It's Courtney, Kathleen, Tony, and Allison. And tomorrow is the rite of enrollment. You may have remembered we did the rite of welcome here on a Saturday night at HT Loop. Uh, so if you'd like to also be a part of that rite of enrollment tomorrow morning during worship, uh, please join us at 930 for that. Also, during the season of Lent on Thursday nights, we are doing evening prayer uh, with the Lakeview Lutheran uh, churches. So the Lakeview Lutheran Parish is doing evening prayer on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. So if you'd like another opportunity to worship uh, midweek uh, throughout the season of Lent, please join us on a Thursday night at 7 p.m. Another opportunity for worship is actually tonight. Um, it's not through Holy Trinity, uh, but with our, our friends from St. Luke's Logan Square and St. Philip's, uh, they are going to be holding a service of lament, uh, marking this one year mark since many of our churches went online for worship. So kind of a one year later service of lament. If you'd like to be a part of that, that's tonight at 7 p.m. So if you have it in you for another worship service, I'd encourage you to check that out. If you can't join that service, um, I'm assured that they're going to have probably a, re a recording, put that on Facebook or on YouTube somewhere where you can watch it later. As well, uh, next week in worship, uh, we will be including our own um, litany of, of lament as we mark this one year uh, mark since we all have gone online and endured new, endured new things and tried new things and many changes to all of our lives um, during this time. And so we will be marking that next week in worship as well. So with all of that said, uh, I just want to say one more time a welcome to everyone who is here with us tonight. Feel free to stick around after worship for a time of fellowship. Uh, we can even talk about what this year has been like for many of us. Maybe talk about the surprises and challenges that we've faced. So if you'd like to meet some new people, have a time of fellowship, please stick around after worship for our reception. We continue now with our thanksgiving for the word. Holy God. Our living water, our faithful companion, our true guide. By your word, you created a world with rivers and seas, wells and springs. And in your mercy, you provided water for your people in the wilderness. For your word with the water of baptism, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We praise you for Christ, who joined us in our desert calling us to righteousness, granting forgiveness, and walking with us into newness of life. For Jesus, your gracious word, we glorify you, O oh God. We glorify you, O oh God. Through these days of Lent, we plead for your spirit, that strengthened by your word, we may care for others and your world and the world you made, and work for justice and peace for all for your word in our hearts and minds. We praise you, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God. Receive our thanksgiving and grant us your blessing, holy God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join me with the ancient gesture of outstretched arms as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who calls you to take up your cross, give you strength to carry your own and one another's burdens. And may God bless you now and forever. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen.
in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. I now invite you to turn on your camera if you feel comfortable doing so and to enter into gallery view, the top upper right hand of your screen so that we can share the peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. God's peace, everyone.